I'm now going to teach you some calculus theorems. And here is the very first one. And this theorem states that if you have two parallel lines, that their slopes are going to be equal. Now the proof of this pretty much comes out of Euclid Book 1, Proposition number 28. That means you should already know this theorem because of Euclid Book 1, Proposition number 28. And I taught you this a long time ago. So if you want to look up Euclid Book 1, Proposition number 28, you'll see basically the proof. Okay, now they go a little more technical than that, but basically the proof is right there. Now there are more calculus theorems, so hang in there. I have a few more to teach you tonight. Stay tuned. Here is another calculus theorem that for the most part you should already know. Wait a minute. Why is that? Well, let me tell you what the theorem is. What it says here is that the lines S and R, here's line R, here's line S, they're perpendicular lines. Okay. Now here's the key. The slope of line S here is the negative reciprocal of the slope of line R. But how do we know all this? Well, we have to consult another Euclid theorem about all this. So what? You mean this was in Euclid Elements as well? Yes, it was. It was in Book 1, Proposition number 32. So if you look up Euclid Book 1, Proposition number 32, this should look very familiar to you. Okay. Now what it's saying here is that since the number of degrees of this angle is equal to the sum. Okay, we have to add two things together. Well, obviously we know this particular angle is 90 degrees, and then we're going to add the number of degrees of this angle to that. That's where we get all this. The degrees of A2 equals the sum of the degrees of A1 plus 90 degrees. Well, then that in turn becomes the tangent of the number of degrees of A2, which is uh, this one right here, is the same as the tangent. Now, first of all, we find out how many degrees are in A1. We add that to 90, and then we find the tangent of that value. And the tangent of that value will be the same as the tangent of that value. Now. As you already know, there is a tangent and also a cotangent. And I explained this many, many videos ago. Okay? Well, the negative cotangent of A1, that one right there, is negative 1 over tangent of A1. There you go. But anyway, like I said, most of this theorem can be found in Euclid Book 1, Proposition number 32. All right. I will tell you one more in just a second, so I'd like for you to stay tuned. I'm now going to cover the final calculus proof for this video. And it's this one right here. Are you ready? Okay. Now this one is involving the angle between two lines. Well, here's the angle, and it's between these two lines, and this line runs in a positive direction like this. It's going, it, it was drawn from the bottom to the top, and so was this one. This one was drawn from the bottom to the top. It's very important to know. Now, if two lines are not parallel, do you remember what parallel lines are? That's good, because if you don't, two parallel lines, okay, if, if two lines are parallel, they will never meet. But, if two lines, like this one and this one here, are not parallel, they will meet at some point. And in this case, they met right here. Okay? And they will form an angle. This one, right here. That's the angle they formed. 
Now, according to this book that I have, there were actually two angles formed when these two lines intersected. Okay? And one of those angles is a supplement to the other angle. Okay? In other words, if you, add, if you add it together, the number of degrees in this angle and its supplement, you would get 180 degrees. Okay? Now, these two right here are angles, obviously, okay? But they happen to be the inclination of two lines. This is the inclination of this line right here. This is the inclination of this line right here. Okay. Now, we're going to say that this angle here has an, an angle that is greater in the number of degrees than this one right here. Okay. So, we're going to say, and we're going to base this on Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 15, and Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 32, and you can look both of those up, but thanks to those two proofs, we can say that the sum of this angle right here and this angle right here, if we added the number of degrees of this angle and the number of degrees in this angle, we get the number of degrees in that angle. Okay? And you can look this up in Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 15, and in Euclid Book 1, Proposition Number 32, and you will know that is true. Now, of course, we're going to do a little arithmetic. First of all, we're going to move this over here. So that makes the negative, and this is actually a Greek letter right here. Okay, I believe it's theta. If it's not, you can criticize me. You can leave a comment and say, that ain't theta, but I think that's theta. Okay, bear with me. But anyway, this angle right here becomes a negative because you're going to add a negative of that angle to both sides, and that makes that negative. And, of course, we're going to subtract A2 from both sides of this equation, so you're going to have A1 minus A2. Okay? Then we're going to multiply every single term here by negative 1. And when we do, this becomes positive, this becomes positive, this becomes negatives. Now then, we know this equation is true. Well, it's not going to change a bit just because we find the tangent values of the number of degrees in this angle, the number of degrees in this angle, and the number of degrees in that angle. Nothing changes except now we know all their tangent values. Okay. Now, what is this? The tangent of A2 minus A1. Well, that's a tangent identity. Do you remember in trig identities, I just posted that video up, oh, I don't know, a few days ago or whatever. Do you remember I showed you a tangent identity? Well, here it is. We're now going to substitute this with this. And we can do that because we now know the tangent identity. Okay? Okay. So, we're going to use this tangent identity to finally prove this calculus proof. So, the identity in question is the tangent of the difference of two angles. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the number of degrees of these two angles, and when we do, we find that tangent value, bam, there you go. Okay? Now then... In mathematics, we always, or we should always, if we're talking about slope, we have to represent slope as the lowercase letter m. And I talked about this, I discussed this in prior mathematics videos, you can look it up for yourself, you can look up um, slopes and, and uh, tangent lines and all this other stuff on my YouTube. But anyway, we represent it by m. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the values of all these tangents with slope. Instead of having A1, we're going to have M1. 
just like that. Instead of having A2, we're going to have M2. Okay? And we can do this. So, what is the tangent of this angle right here? Well, it's this slope here minus this slope here divided by 1 plus the product of the slope of this line and the slope of that line. Okay? Now, whichever one of these two lines have the greater inclination, that will be represented by M2. Okay, because if you don't represent the, the line with the greater inclination with M2, what you're going to have is a negative value here, and you can't divide a negative by anything like this. Especially if you have a negative down here, okay, it, it, it would screw up everything. So, what's the theorem they're trying to state? If these two right here, if these two slopes are the slopes of two lines, which is this one and this one, the tangent of this angle right here, which I believe is theta, between the two lines is given by this formula. And that's what they were saying in the proof. All right. Well, that concludes my calculus proofs for this particular edition. I hope you had a load of fun. You learned a lot of new, neat new stuff. I will tell you more in a future video, so I would like for you to stay tuned.